Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning on in. Today, we're not going to be talking about trains. We're not going to be talking about personal finance. We're not even going to be talking about music too much. Today marks 30 days since I have been sober, and I feel amazing. Reason for making this video beyond that 30 day milestone is also it's a seven year timestamp to the day that I walked home from a hospital after an unfortunate encounter with law enforcement. And despite all that, um, I, I continued to, to drink in, into my 20s and it's something that I'm starting to come to regret. But in light of that, I'm feeling amazing in the past 30 days that I've been sober. I think this is the longest I've gone since that incident about seven years ago. And I want to share how I'm feeling with y'all. So those of y'all that are curious about, you know, a more sober lifestyle, um, you can just get a gauge and see, well, is it something that I want to do? You know, how does, you know, is there a big benefit, little benefit, no benefit at all? Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on YouTube like this. But if you want a wide variety of folks' experiences, then you know, I'm contributing to the pool. So other reason for making this video beyond just passing on my own experiences to those that are curious is holding myself accountable. If I go out into the public and say, hey, I've been sober for 30 days and I intend to remain sober for the remainder of this year and possibly beyond, then uh, I'm more likely to do it. So it's a selfish means of personal accountability. So let's talk about the last time I had beer, had alcohol period. I was, uh, I was on a bumble date with a gal that uh, turned out to be insufferably misandristic. And you know, as encounters with those type people go, I eventually get into a debate. And I found myself increasingly frustrated with myself because I was unable to articulate exactly um, the thoughts that were coming to my head and that kind of thing. And I'm like, well, why can't I think? Why can't I talk? And as research shows, you know, alcohol slows down your brain, specifically your prefrontal cortex, which is in charge of uh, language and, and speech and all that kind of stuff. And to me, it was, it was frustrating, but at the same time, too, it's like, well, nobody's making you drink this, this bread water that had gone bad, except for me. And so, you know, I'm looking back on it now, it's like, gosh, I should not have, first of all, I shouldn't have gone on a date with that gal. She was not, not worth my time. But the other thing is, I should not have been, you know, dumping that substance into my body. And I was. It was only one beer, but still, um, you know, I think back to experiences that I had and uh, I've had in the past, and I'm like, well, perhaps it would have been more fun sober. So, um, with that, you know, I'll talk about how have things changed for me over the past 30 days, uh, how have I felt, and that kind of thing. Have I missed out on anything, and all that jazz. So, one of the first things that I'll mention is the noise floor in my own brain feels like it's dropped. Um, so in signals processing, you know, you, the term noise floor refers to just basically background noise and uh, the amount of signal that you'll need um, to see something through the noise, basically. So, you know, it's like if you're in a noisy room full of people talking, you know, you, so you have to be, you have to yell at a certain level to be heard. Uh, by the person next to you. Yeah, basically, you, your own voice has to exceed the noise floor. Or, you know, if you're in a really, really bright environment and you're trying to signal somebody with, with a, a laser or an LED, um, you know, that laser or that LED has to be a, a certain brightness above, you know, the background noise and, and you know, a dark current and, and the focal point. Or, you know, we'll, we'll skip the details there, but long story short, um, it sure is nice, you know, to have a quiet conversation with somebody and, you know, not have noise in your own brain because you're sober. And that's something that I've experienced. It's beyond just talking with people, too. I've noticed more details, like the, the grain in leather, um, 
the color of people's eyes, the texture in their hair, um, and the way certain textures and stuff just feel. Um, there's more detail to notice when, when all that background noise in your own brain has gone away. So, I mean, I guess in a sense, it is like you more or less cryo cool the camera. And, uh, you know, the, the, the dark noise from the camera having a certain temperature has gone away. Same thing, but in your brain. Um, second thing I've noticed is I'm getting a lot better sleep. I found it easier to go to bed because I'm not drinking in the evening. And then also, I'm finding it easier to wake up, and I feel like I'm getting deeper sleep and more meaningful sleep. There's times where I'm waking up at, at 5.10, 5.20 in the morning, and <laughs> I don't even set an alarm. I, I beat my alarm up. Like, you know, by the time my alarm's gone off, I'm already folding clothes, brushing my teeth, putting running stuff on, making eggs, that kind of thing. And um, it's just, it's really nice. I feel more at peace, which is gets into the next thing I want to talk about. I just have less anxiety overall. I've, I've always been an anxious person. I, th I think it's a genetic thing. Um, but I've noticed I was using alcohol as a social lubricant to give me the, the confidence to go up and talk to people, um, you know, talk to folks I found interesting, talk to, to gals that I found attractive. and. You know, when you no longer drink, it's like you have to be an adult and really face what you want to do. And even if it scares you, you look it dead in the eye and you go for it rather than, you know, leaning on a, uh, a substance as a crutch. And it's been nice in that sense. I feel like I have more agency over my life um, and the people that I meet because of that. Um, so... Another added benefit is I feel like my skin is clearer. I, you know, probably can't tell because I've been eating more dairy than uh, I should, but it just I, it feels more youthful. Um, I don't feel like my skin is as dried out. And I believe Jennifer Lopez, uh, the celebrity sings on the floor, you know, she talks about how much water she drinks to keep her, her skin looking vibrant. And I'm like, well, the, uh, if you want to go in the other direction and have your skin look old and haggardy, all you have to do is, is drink alcohol and, and not drink water because uh, it, it's a diuretic and, and drains your body of water. So another added benefit too is I've had the energy to, to do the things I want to do and to do the things that uh, I feel like I need to do. Um, as an example, I was able to finish my Interstate 35 high-speed rail video a day or two ago just because I feel like I have the focus and, and the drive to do that. When I was drinking I felt like I didn't have time to do that. On top of that I've also had the energy to go drive up to Colorado and, and climb a couple 14ers. Um, I've slept in the back of my car and I woke up with plenty of energy the next day. I didn't feel sore at all um, and I attribute that to me drinking plenty of water and um, that kind of thing. <laughs> Car camping is okay if you know what you're getting yourself into, but if you don't drink, you'll wake up with more energy, even in uncomfortable sleeping positions. And then the last thing um, I've benefited from is I've had more money. So when I'm no longer going out on dates that uh, require me to pony up money to buy booze for myself and one other person or even just one other person you know that's that can easily turn into you know fifty dollars a month hundred dollars a month hundred fifty dollars a month maybe even more and as a result I've, I've been able to uh, run a cash surplus to the point where I am able to buy this Larrabee LB10 and it's a great guitar. In a separate video, I'll make a review of it. Um, but yeah, having that extra cash flow to either invest or pay off a mortgage early or just spend it on things that I like to spend it on, it's, it's really nice. Um, so I guess we'll wrap things on up. I've got a few more videos to make. 
with that guitar and you know talking about my experience running into, into cops that had no business in law enforcement it's I've got plenty of videos to make but uh, we'll close things out um, just want to reiterate that I'm making this video uh, to inspire everybody who's you know, curious about sobriety um, what the lifestyle is like and how you feel like things have changed I'm a real person I'm not sponsored by anybody um, I just do what you want to do I feel like I'm not really missing out on too much socially if I'm invited to a party and there's alcohol there I'll, I'll drink water or I'll drink a fake soda and you know it, it's if I need to get drunk to have a good time then I probably shouldn't be there to begin with um, so anyhow thank you all so much for tuning on in I'll probably be making an update video come uh, calendar year 2024 so be on the lookout for how I feel in January and we'll see if I actually uh, made it to the end of the year. I anticipate that I will. Using the term actually, uh, it's probably a bad word choice and bad tone. But anyhow, thanks so much for watching. I'll check back in in good time. Over and out. I hope you enjoy life and uh, if you're planning on going on a sobriety journey, welcome to the club. If you're not ready yet, get ready. I hope you make that decision. Anyhow, or if you don't, that's okay too. See y'all later.